Okay, we're going to have two exterior because the swimming pool gate is locked. This is going to be two exterior videos. Both going to be a little bit on the longer side. We're starting here on the east side of the house. We're on the south side of the fence. The front yard. I'm going to be front and west sides. Uh, lawn sprinkler heads. This one's been capped off. But as we go, lawn sprinkler heads should not be positioned closer than 12 inches to a structure. This is a pier and beam. The grading and drainage along this east side is level. We're not getting a lot of direction. Water's really not directed away from the house, away from the structure at this point. Uh, looks like we've had some window replacements. These are vinyl windows. These are soffit vents. These are rain gutters. Some of the rain gutter downspouts, the transition, the accordion transition boots are torn or compromised here. Trees should not be placed closer than 25 feet to a structure so it allow for root growth and uh, damage from leaves onto the branches onto the roof. So it's bad for the foundation, it's bad for the structure. Uh, this might be argued that this is a bush, I guess, but if it's wider than three inches, then no, no, it's a, it's a tree. That's a tree. That's a tree. Wood mulch underneath the drip line on a structure, according to the Texas Structural Pest Control Board. Um, this is conducive, conducive to wood destroying insects. I get it. I've got wood mulch next to my house. My wife likes it. We all like it. I get that. But it's conducive to wood destroying insects. It just is. I didn't make that up. Coming on along, uh, we've got some repairs that are pretty obvious. These are uh, vertical windows. This is uh, we've had some repairs, and then we've got some cracking that's been continuing. So there's. Uh, Welcome to North Texas. We're going to have some movement. We are. See? See the crack? Okay, we're going to have it. This is a GFCI protected electric receptacle outlet. It is. And it works. I tested it already. This was okay, you know, at a time. But out in the open like this, that should have a in-use cover is what they're called. Some people call them bubble covers or helmets or whatever. Call it what you will. But you cannot plug your Christmas lights in here and be able to close that. So once the Christmas lights are plugged in, supposedly, supposedly once the Christmas lights are plugged in and it just stays open, it's exposed to the weather. We've got a form board expansion joint board here. What's this about? Just kind of looking ugly. So what's happened here, by the way, what's happened here is that the sidewalk has dropped. Not supposed to have more than a 32nd of an inch difference between these two steps. Of course, you do now. Of course, it's settled. You'd be all right, I guess. But if Granny comes to visit you, you might want to hold her. You might want to hold her by the elbow and help her along. I'm just saying. Uh, these holes right here, these are called drill holes. The only reason we put holes in sidewalks like this and uh, around the structure, there's only one reason to do that: is that it's product that's code for poison was applied in here and the only product code for poison that you would apply in this manner would be a subterranean termite treatment. Subterranean, this house has been treated at least once for subterranean termites. We don't know who treated it, we don't know when it was treated, we do not know what they used to treat it. But we do know that the house has been treated. That's usually a reactionary move. It's not always at this stage of the game when we're drilling holes that's not that's not a preventative treatment. That's a reactionary treatment. So it is reasonable to assume this house has experienced a wood destroying insect, a termite infestation. It didn't have to happen, but we know it's been treated. Storm doors are beyond the scope of this inspection. Got a little bit of movement right in here. These um, sconces, these wall sconces, electric receptacles, electric luminaries. Okay, they should have been sealed to help prevent moisture infiltration into the structure. And we've got some more of these repairs that I was talking about. I'm getting a red light. I probably wouldn't have had enough battery to finish this regardless. So we'll see how it goes. Um, same, 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 same. Too close. We've got some exposed on sprinkler irrigation. This will freeze. This will freeze, even in Texas. Even in Texas. Have a tree too close there, and the rain gutters discharge above. 
Coming along here so far, at least on the front, this is the most predominant stair step crack that I've seen, that I've noticed so far. Right here, we're on the west side. Now we went around the south, we started on the east. Both, well, I'll talk about that. But anyway, both of these um, faucets in the front, I don't know about the back, haven't gotten there yet, but they should have anti-siphon vacuum breakers on them and they should be insulated and they should be supported. This is the kitchen window. Um, it looks uh, some more stair step cracks. This is a middle window. I'm thinking maybe this is a breakfast area. I'm not sure, but it's the middle window on the west wall. And we've got some more stair step cracks here. This is a closed door event and it's nice and new. Look at that. That's pretty cool. So we're good. We're good there. And then not just brick, I and mean, one thing we don't have on the brick, and it's very common with pier and beam foundations of this era, so it's rare that you actually see weep holes. It's rare that you see that, and we don't. Uh, we do see that we've got a cast iron drain system, so you might want to get this checked out further by a plumber. Pressure test, camera scope, wherever you find your, your comfort level, that's, that's what should happen. We got some wood, we got some wood. Um, as we're painting, we're clogging our, our vents a little bit here. Our air intake vents are getting clogged. Just saying. Just saying water discharges. Next to the ground, we got a metal overhead car entry door. And it looks like somebody's been running into it here. It looks like we had some fun. And it looks like there's been some repairs. This casement shouldn't be this close. It should look more like this casement over here. There should be a gap underneath the vertical trim. See they cut that off? It's because it was rotting. And they replaced it. See that's a repair. I replaced it because it used to be like this. It used to be like this. And water, what happened over there was water wicked up inside of here and caused it to rot. And it will this too. Now this gate, this gate opens outwards. We have a swimming pool. That's good. That's good. But this fence is installed backwards. Inside out. These rails could be used as ladder rungs. And see, they tried to avoid that. They, they tried to, you know, meet the intent. But these rails should be on the inside of the fence. They should not be exposed to the exterior. They just shouldn't. That's, that's not the way it goes. It's the way it went today. It's the way it's going now. But it should have been installed differently. And we'll talk about this in a little bit, but why not? We're here, the electric cable. That's called the service drop. Okay, it should not be closer than three feet to your roof. It shouldn't, I'm just seeing how much battery I got. 